May the 4th be with you. May the 24th be with you. Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette. Welcome to Good Owl Games and welcome to May's Monthly Roundup. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to May's Monthly Roundup video, the video where I talk about the changes to my board game collection. I have a section for new games I've acquired, a section for games I've been playing, and then kind of a personal chit chat bit section at the end if you want to stay tuned for that. And if you don't, there's timestamps throughout the video, but of course I would love you to come and watch the whole thing. Or subscribe, subscribing is good. Um, right, so today I'm in a bit of a gym jam, so I'm just going to try and film this as quickly and as succinctly as possible. Um, you can find out why at the end of the video, I suppose. Um, but first I'm going to churn out kind of all of the information. Um, now, there's not a ton of games um, played and things this month, mostly because I've just not been feeling well. Um, but there are still games to be talked about nonetheless. And as always, I want to hear about your games. I want to know what you've been playing. I want to know what you picked up. Is there something I've been missing? I'd love to know some more. Um, so right, let's launch right into the shindig. Um, and the first game I'm going to talk about um, acquiring this month is... Arc Nova. Yes, I had to think about that. Because um, I talked about Arc Nova in last month's video because it's the hotness, everyone's getting it. And a friend of mine really, really wanted to get a hold of it. For some reason, I was convinced it was made by Uwe Rosenberg. So I was in no rush to get it. My friend was going to get it instead. Um, turned out it's not designed by that man at all. Um, so this puts, you know, <laughs> it puts the game like way up in my, uh, way up in my estimation. Um, but we bought a copy to give to our friend and then his friend arrived. So we got our copy. So I've now had three games of Arc Nova under my belt. Here is my analysis. Um, Arc Nova is a game about um, basically running a zoo. So not only do you have animal um, obligations, you also um, have to like make friends with other countries and get, bring in money and things like that. Um, and Arc Nova to me is an amalgamation of loads of other games um, that I really enjoy. Like the scoring tracker in the edge is like Raja the Ganges. Your player board is a little bit like Castles of Burgundy where you're filling out the things to make them fit in the space. Um, I know there are other things I thought of while I, while, while I was, play, while I was playing. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. This game is its own, um, in its own way, because of the way it put together all these different mechanics. So it is very kind of fun to play, um, up until the point where you score. Um, I don't think I've got a, a positive score yet, because you can go into negatives. Um, I think the way the game ends is unusual for this type of game, because it is about shooting past one track to pass another and how far past you go is what determines your victory points so it doesn't matter that you triggered the end of the game and you passed your marker someone else can grossly overstep that um, and change things a little bit so the end always feels a little bit like a I don't know a rush or a smash and grab I don't I don't know but it always feels like someone ran away with it in its own strange way um, I do like a lot of how the game goes together. I, I like that you get the animals, that they go in the enclosures. Um, like all of it is completely and entirely pleasant. Is it mind blowing? I, I don't think so. I think the more I've played it, um, the less kind of special it has felt. Oh, and of course the other fun mechanic, sorry, I had to throw that in there, is that to choose your actions on your turn, they're kind of in a river. Um, and so the stronger, the further to the right they are, the stronger the action is, but then once you use it, it moves down to the bottom of the river again. Um, I really love that, that comes from the Civ game. Um, <laughs> like there's really a lot to love about it. I just don't know how compelling it is. Um, you know, there's that kind of thing. And it also, it takes quite a long time to play. It's a it's a big game in many, many respects. Um, I can see why people like it so much. I like it too. Um, do I, I'm just not sure how often I would play it over something else. Um, but yeah, it's definitely fun, easygoing and enjoyable. It deserves all the praise it gets. I just wonder, you know, will we still be talking about Arc Nova in a couple of years time? So who knows? Who knows? Early days yet. So there you go. I finally got to play Arc Nova, everybody. Hurrah! Made it all the way to that. All right, so next on the agenda, I suppose, is something that I wasn't expecting to purchase. Um, and this is Longshot the Dice Game. 
Yeah, so those of you who know me around here know me. I'm not really a roll and write person, although they are starting to sneak their way into my lives a little bit. Um, and I'm not sure this is entirely a roll and write, but it's very close because it is a game about horse racing and you have your little card and you roll a dice and you'll mark off things on your card to have bonuses or about bets on horses or buy horses all the horse stuff happens on your little board it's a a white board you can wipe off um and you roll the dice to see how far the horses move um i quite liked it um racing games in our house are ones we have way too many of and not enough people to play with but this was kind of nice at two it didn't take too long to play um like th the dice rolling is random but you both cope with the same random you know what i mean the dice is still that way um there are prizes for owning the horse that wins and the, f the race and first second and third you can have bets on others um and that so yeah it's very simple um it's very pretty i kind of like how it's put together it came in a magnetic box i know right a little clicky box which i liked a lot um yeah I, I had a bit of fun with this i'm looking forward to giving a couple of more games it was like like playing a full-size race game but compact has a little bit of the feeling of downforce in it that you might want someone else's horses to win because you've bet on it which is always a nice thing like your horse doesn't have to win for you to win so that's always nice as well um but yeah so that is long shot shot the dice game um, next on the agenda, um, I finally picked up Hippocrates. This has been mentioned a couple of times, I think, in the comments um, on these videos. And so when I saw my local store had it, I thought I'd give it a go. And I've now fondly named it the game that was a waste of a Monday night. Um, I did not enjoy Hippocrates. I haven't hated a game that much in ages. Um, okay, so here we go. What's Hippocrates about? Um, you are doctors. Well, actually, you're not a doctor. You're kind of running a health center where you can acquire doctors and the doctors will heal their pay patients with potions and then you will get money and victory points for doing so. Um, so the, oh, where do I start? OK, um, so I'm going to start with some of the, the fun bits of the game. So your doctor is a particular shape and they have little kind of um, cardboard cutouts at the end into which your patients will fit. So you kind of click them together, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. And on each of these edges, um, your doctors will have potions. They come in three colors, um, purple, blue, and green. And there are real tiny little potion bottles that are like the best thing in the whole game. And so what that means is, so you're, you know, the person you're trying to heal will require certain potions and you connect up the doctors with them to connect their potions. Sounds cool. Um, and so the first portion of kind of the round is spent acquiring patients. And they come from the own the dice section of the game with some of the worst dice I've ever seen. You'd think for a game that is about dice, you would have had nice dice, but they're, the pips are in odd locations. They're kind of squared away. So it, it looks like it's your regular two pips on a six die, but it's not. Um, so you roll those and you're only able to take um, those patients who are next to a dice um, and they will um, watch <laughs> and they will annoy you um, so yeah they'll just tell you what potions and stuff they want and then you'll take those into your kind of your building and then you send them out to your doctor if you don't take care of them they go down levels um, and eventually die and go to hell i think or some bad place on the bottom of your board um that never really happened so i never had to worry about it um my big issue actually with this is the the patients never got any more difficult so we would end up you know having way more potions than necessary um, to heal all the people. Uh, so much so that I was convinced we were playing it incorrectly. But there is a limit to the number of people you can have around and a limit to the number of doctors. I think you can only have two. You can, you can buy one doctor. They come with bundles if you want to get more potions or more extra bits at the bottom. Or then there's like a wandering doctor that you can pick up um, as well if you have enough money. Um, but like I, you play four rounds by round two I was already bored because none of the patients get any more difficult no nothing changes you do the exact same thing for four rounds and all it is is pick the person get the money give them the potion do it again like oh yeah major major disappointment with this um I don't know I don't know what anybody was 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 thinking I was like surely it'll escalate or it'll get more difficult or there'll be something we'll have to do here that isn't just buy the thing put it in the thing but apparently no so yeah that was my review of Hippocrates a waste of a Monday night um I could have been doing something else 
Um, if anybody does like it, I'd love to hear why. Maybe, like, I kept hoping I was doing something wrong. We read the rule book a few times just to check where there's an error or something like that. Um, but no, just not not my jam at all. But if you love it, good for you. I'm glad someone would be... It would be nice to know someone out there was enjoying it. That would be good. Just just not me. Um, so that is Hippocrates. Um, I think that's the last game I bought, bought this month. Um, but I do have a number of review copies to talk about. Um, so I'm going to start with um, the one that I haven't played yet, I suppose. And this is... Crescent Moon from Osprey Games, who um, they sent to me. It's this gorgeous um, looking game where everyone has kind of asymmetrical powers. It, rem it would remind you a little like of maybe Root or Pax Premier and that feeling where you're a tribe and you're uh, other groups. Um, you need a minimum of four players to play this. It's four to five, apparently. So I'm struggling, people, um, to get myself a group, a group together. But I'm close. I'm nearly there because I have two games now where I need multiple people to come um, and, and show me how this game works. Um, but it's very nicely put together. It's very pretty. I'm dying to see how it plays. So, you know, that's the mystery right there. I can't tell any more information than that. So the final game that arrived that is pretty darn special to me anyway, um, which is a Kickstarter game, but when I, I did back. So this is Pilfering Pandas from Ren Games. Um, some of you might know that I did the social media management for their campaign and it was such a fun adventure. Um, Pilfering Pandas is just a gorgeous game that's kind of similar to Rummy. It definitely feels more like classic card games um, than anything else. It's got some gorgeous art, um, some kind of interesting and very challenging gameplay. I think people underestimate Ren games. Their games can be very hard. Um, and so this was, yeah, this, this is fun. This is a, a, a space in my heart. Um, I got a really nice play mat with as well and some gorgeous pins with red pandas and things on it. And yeah, this whole thing is just like a dream package. And to see it come to life is really, really magical because I kind of played a, a part in it, which is which was lovely. I got to see some of the behind the scenes stuff and watch it come together. Um, so I assume some of you out there got your pilfering pandas. Have you been playing it yet? Like I'm actually afraid to open it to play it because I remember just how difficult it was. I filmed a how to play video for this and you don't want to know how many takes it took us to make sure that we had the game just right. And even then we had an error. Um, so it was just, oh yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a challenge, but a fun one. Um, and you can play it cooperatively. Um, you can play it solo. So yeah, it's worth checking out if that anything like that sounds like a jam I know it's going to go on my little shelf behind me here and I'll keep it there for for memory's sake um so yeah the time where I got to help with the kickstarter campaign isn't that nice I'd love to do something like that again someday who knows maybe I'll put it out there in the universe and see if it comes back to me um be fun stuff um right so that is I believe all of the new games this month um been a couple um but um, so yeah, that's what I that's what that's what I've been acquiring and playing. Um, I hope you guys have been getting something cool yourselves, if anything at all. Um, what's been your delight of the month that you've picked up? Um, and let's roll on over to the games I've been playing section because this is going to be tiny. Okay, so let's talk very quickly about one game that I've been playing because I'm absolutely running out of steam. And I'm going to talk about Beyond the Sun from Rio Grande Games. And Beyond the Sun is a game I got, I want to say, a year or so ago now. And when I got it, the first play was really fun. We really liked it. And I very quickly played it a second time with a friend of ours. We all played it together and really liked it. And I promptly hadn't played it since then. Um, and so we finally decided to kind of go back and play it for a third time, even though there'd been a really big gap. And we're like, will we have to learn this game all over again? Um, I'm glad to say that most of it came back, actually. there's I love when a game kind of has reminders and places for you. So um, helping you kind of piece together the information you already know. So, for instance, if you look at um, Beyond the Sun, you have a player board where all of your pieces kind of sit into. It's a recess player board. And the action of putting those in there reminded me that this is where my resources come from or go to um, and helped it all kind of sit together quite nicely. But what Beyond the Sun is about is, yeah, it's exploring in space. Um, there are kind of two routes you can go where you can explore planets and um, colonize them, or you can like um, advance your technology and go up this huge tech tree that is kind of the basis of the, the game. Um, 
I like a lot of things about this game. There's something about the way it fits together. It's very chill. Like, it's definitely a Euro game, um, and it's probably not the most exciting. I don't know. I, I like it. I'm I actually so. So what? Okay, there's this terrible, you know, feeling that Euro games are just boring. You know, dry Euro. Well, I think that's a misnomer. Dry things can be awesome. Um, just like games and just because it's dry to someone else doesn't mean it is to you um, I like these kind of procedural things um, and I loved unlo you unlocking all of the tech trees as you go along um, a lot of it is about like choosing which action you're taking on a turn um, and so as these tech trees become revealed you can use different actions um, and you know these control all of the parts on your board um, I'm always, I'm always fond of this and I was delighted that we kind of remembered it so quickly that it didn't feel like a learning game the second time around. Um, how it kind of ends is unusual. It's a little bit like Scythe where there are a number of goals to be met and once the goals are met, the game ends. And so it can have kind of an abrupt finish um, without, <laughs> kind of without you knowing. Although I'm pretty sure you get another turn. I can't remember if you get another turn or not at the end. Um, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, this is a really great game. I wish it had some sort of art. It's got nothing on it, especially for the price tag of the game. Like you get recess boards and I get it. They're lovely. Um, and they definitely enhance the game somewhat, but everything else is just like space color, you know, <laughs> like blue and black. Um, and that's all you get. I would love for this game to look a little bit better. I think it will really help it a lot. But um, yeah, it's still fun, still good, can still recommend it. And now that's its third play. So I think it's officially a keeper. Um, I have a rule in my house that you play everything three times and then you can decide whether or not you're going to move it on. Um, although there are some exceptions if you really don't like a game after the first or the second play. There's no point going for a third. Um, but this one now is definitely a firm favourite. Um, is anyone else still playing it? I do see it pop up every so often um, online. And I'm always, I'm, it's always nice to see a game you like um, being enjoyed by other people. I get so much pleasure out of that. I love nothing more than someone going, oh, yeah, Nettie, you know, you had this game and now I've bought it and we really love it and it's like most of that joy is mine now I'm like yes <laughs> so um, I'd love to know yeah, if anyone else is out there playing Beyond the Sun um, good stuff so I could talk about some other things but I kind of talked about them in the first bit so that'll do for movies movies that'll do for games um, for the what I've been playing I'd, I'd tell me about yours help me fill in this gap um, yeah, running out of steam. So I'm going to very quickly jump to the final section, which is kind of the personal bit. I think it'll be short as well. Um, but um, hopefully you'll join me over there. So this has been a bit of a nightmare two weeks or so. I've just been so exhausted. I just can't, I can't do anything. I can't, actually it's really difficult to even look at my computer at the moment to do anything. So um, I'm glad I've made it this far and it'd be nice to get this video done today so that I can kind of relax for the rest of the week and just edit it up. Um, so yeah, welcome. So the first thing I'm gonna point out here is the, the, the this. Um, do you like it? Is it good? Um, I hope so. I went, I went to a bit of effort to try and put this together and make it look vaguely like, I don't know, it looks like a lounge I'm going for now, I think. Um, but just something kind of a bit more me. Um, and I think that this is, this is probably part of the reason I've just been so exhausted and upset. I'm the kind of person, I say this every week, I'm the kind of person. Um, for me anyway, like, how do I get it? Sometimes outside changes really affect me emotionally. I don't do, deal well with good things or nice things. And it's possible I just, I've no way to process all of the nice here. Um, so I've just fallen over instead, <laughs> um, which seems incredibly likely. Um, but I really like how it came out. Um, I just, I really like that color blue as well. So hopefully you guys like it as much. And it looks as good when I translate this over, um, trying out a few new different things. Um, so yeah, so I have a number of game reviews um, in the works, which is nice. It'll definitely keep me busy for a little while. Um, <laughs> I'm getting there very, very slowly, but trying to get everything done in order. Um, what else has been happening? Um, I've still been trying to get out for walks and things like that and taking photographs outdoors as usual, although that's getting to be kind of difficult now as well. Yeah, everything's just really difficult right now. Like everything is literally just like out of out of reach, out of mind. So I'm doing the best I can with what I've got, um, which is really annoying because I've been kind of on a, a go, 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 go for a bit and now it's all like, Phew. Um, but I guess, this is this is what it is. 
I have still been going to the cinema. Um, I don't know if any of you are interested in very small cinema reviews, um, but you know that that said, I've seen a whole bunch of things um, that were really really fun. Um, highlight of the month, I suppose, the Nicolas Cage movie was really good. Um, I saw everything everywhere all at once. That was spectacular because I didn't really know anything about it going in. That was okay. Um, I saw the new Marvel movie, the Doctor Strange one. Um, okay, fun to watch. No, mm, mm, mm. I watched the Down Abbey movie in, um, what should we call it, in Max. <laughs> and it was just an extended episode of Down Abbey, I assure you. Um, yeah, I've been kind of, I've been kind of busy. I've been trying to go in the afternoons as often as possible to the cinema. I think it's good to get me out of the house and do something kind of by myself. Um, so yeah, that's been that stretch. I'm waiting for a bunch of stuff to come into the cinema now soon, so that should be exciting. Um, yeah, that kind of thing's been going on. So yeah, I'm just trying to keep everything motoring, I guess, is the, is the real word. I guess we all are, aren't we? Like, that's not a very singular goal there. <laughs> um, I hope you all are well, um, and that you're kind of, the days are getting a bit brighter, and you're kind of looking forward to I don't know, a bit of sun, a bit of holiday, um, which would be nice. Or just, you know what I mean? Just a bit of a change. I don't know about you guys, wherever you live, but Ireland's always kind of grey and rainy. Um, and, you know, any bit of sunshine we had is something to be coveted. So I'm the sort of person who goes, oh my God, it's sunny outside today. We should, we should embrace this. We should go out and enjoy it because it'll never last. Um, so I'm trying to like live my sunny days like this. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. Um, yeah, so I'm going to call it quits here and keep it short this week because I might fall over. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully next month will be kind of a, a bump up from this as, as things will right themselves. I can, I can only hope. Um, and I look forward to um, seeing you all then. And mostly just leave me some comments below. Tell me what you're playing, what you're doing. I want to hear all about it. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Tune in again soon. Bye-bye.